That's why we changed the name from Potluck to Kettle Blessing. Because I don't... Life does not have anything to do with luck. So, so I've preached and taught about that before, but I still see people that not you know, knock on wood. And I know that they're looking for the wrong source. I'm supposed to depend on him, on God, not on knocking on wood. What does that do for me? So I just wanted to explain to you where knocking on wood came from. How many of you knock on wood? How many? And you knock on wood because you don't want something bad to happen, right? Okay, so let me explain to you where knocking on wood comes from. It came from the Jews a long time ago. Did you know that Jews in the Bible believe, and they believe in demons? And that life is about good and evil. And it's about spiritual warfare. And we believe in spiritual warfare. And we live it 24-7. We don't have a break, never. But through time, that has evolved and become a, a secular world. So knocking on wood, it, it goes from good luck to bad luck. And, and evolved, Christmas has evolved over time to become secular with Santa Claus. And that Easter time is supposed to be a celebration of Jesus' death and resurrection. But now we have the Easter Bunny. And we add, and we make the world, we make it secular. So this world between good and evil, we put good luck versus bad luck. But it's, life's not really about that at all. A long time ago, the Jews believed that Satan picked on us. How many believe that Satan picks on us? How many? Come on. Come on. If you don't believe that Satan, you need to start to believe that. We are in the middle of spiritual warfare between good and evil. And nothing has nothing to do with good luck and bad luck. God is in control. And, and at that time, Jews would knock on the door, knock on the wood if they were sick, or if there was something bad happening in their life. You know, they didn't want God to punish them. When it got to teach me something, and I feel that Satan, they would knock on a tree to scare Satan away. That was where it came from. But today, people... I have to go to the doctor tomorrow and they think I have, uh, I'm going to have to maybe have surgery or something. Oh, I'm going to knock on wood, I'm knock on my head. <laughs> something like that. What does that mean? One day I was driving in the car and I was, and I was going to have surgery and my son Noah was with me. And while I was driving, it was actually the night before at church, I had told people, I've always prayed that I don't have to have surgery. In the car that morning, Noah said to me, Mom, don't pray that you don't have to have surgery. Pray for good health. And maybe surgery is what's going to give you that good health. And wow, that, was, that really impacted my life because I need to depend on Him. The one who created us, the one who's in control of our lives, and the one who decides everything for us has nothing to do with luck. Nothing. Nothing at all. This morning, I woke up at 7, a little before 7, and at 7 I started studying my sermon. And instantly, I mean instantly, Satan started picking on me. Everything went wrong this morning. Everything. 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 And it had nothing to do with luck. It had to do with this sermon. 
And Satan did not want you to come to church. And Satan did not want me to be able to preach. And Satan has been picking and picking on me. And I did not knock on wood. I did not kiss the lucky coin. I did not kiss the necklace, nothing. I prayed to him to protect me and to make all the demons go away from me because I knew that he sent his son into the world to overcome and to conquer evil. I could depend on him or I could depend on the world. He is the source that we go to to get help. Not the worldly things, not wood, not coins, not all these lucky things, nothing. He. It's important to know that because if you depend on the world, worldly things, you will disconnect from God. It's true. Because you will think things can help you, and you will not ask God to help you. And he's right there ready, wanting you to ask him for help. He wants to help you. He wants to show you what to do and what not to do. He wants to show you his love and his grace and his mercy. And if you depend on the world, worldly things, then you're disconnecting everything from him. Like knocking on wood or you're doing it for the wrong reason. If you knock on a tree to scare the demons away, that's fine. But if you knock on wood, and you don't even know why you're knocking on wood, it's just because you think it's good luck, right? That's why we do it. Okay, I want to show you a verse. Let me say this before I show you the verse, though. The difference is if you use the cross, the cross reminds you of Jesus, that he died and was buried and resurrected. That's different. I cherish my cross. I love this cross. But I don't worship this cross. I worship the Lord that was crucified on the cross. That's different. If you have things in your home, pictures of Jesus or someone from the Bible, and you don't worship that picture, you look at the picture and you think of God. But we misunderstand and we take things and then we start to worship that thing. But we need to use it as a reminder of our Lord. And some people use the cross with Jesus still on the cross. And that's okay. That's a reminder to you that Jesus did suffer and became a sacrifice, a sacrificial lamb. But that is to remind us not to worship that thing. I have a list um, I found on the internet, and I found 50 lucky charms. 50 that people carry with them and worship and have become their idol. It becomes idol worship. It really is. And then we behave like the Hindu or Buddha. Some Christians carry or have with them the Buddha, have the Buddha in their home and they bring it for good luck. That's idol worship. Some people think Buddha's tummy, if you rub the tummy, I will have a lucky day. Buddha's dead. Jesus is alive. He will give you a good day. Not Buddha. Do you see the difference between worshiping things and worshiping our Lord? Depending on things for a good day or depending on God for a good day? This morning, I had a small thought of just running away. But I didn't, I didn't surrender. I surrendered to my Lord and I knew that He would protect us and that He would protect this worship service and that this worship service would become a 10 plus plus plus. Amen? 
Okay, let's look at verse, this is Mark chapter 1, verse 21. Okay, before this, Jesus has already been baptized, and God's grace has rained down on him in his spirit. And so the next, he's already been tempted from Satan. So then remember last week, Jesus chose his disciples to go with him. The people that saved souls went with him. So now, verse 21 says, the twelve disciples went to Capernaum, and when the Sabbath came, Jesus went into the synagogue and began to teach. Okay, synagogue. During Bible times, the synagogue, it's like a teaching school or institute. Doesn't have a pastor. The synagogue led and picked people who were smart that came to read and they would pray together and they would listen to God's word. And then the Torah. They would open that up, and someone would read that and explain the meaning. And that's what I'm doing now. I'm showing you that now in this verse. I'm explaining the meaning to you. So Jesus had free admission to teach to any synagogue he wanted to, and no one got upset or mad at him. So verse 22 says, The people were amazed at his teaching because he taught them as one who had authority, not as the teachers of the law. They were amazed. Why? Because the rabbis would enter and they would teach. And the rabbis would say, God's word. God's word says, and then they would explain it. And God said, and then they would explain it. And they would have a quote, and then they would, they would explain it. So then they had the Torah. But Jesus would just preach and teach without using that. Jesus himself was God. And he would preach and teach. And people would, were so attentive and would listen. They knew it was straight from God, and they just took it in. It was coming straight to them from God, and they felt the peace and the authority, and they felt right. That's exactly like us with the Deaf Church. That's why this church has to fight and fight and fight for many years to try to have a Deaf Church, not a Deaf ministry. We needed a Deaf Church that you can listen and receive directly from God. That's why we have fight so hard and it's important. It's very important. Okay, verse 23 says, Just then, a man in their synagogue, who was possessed by an evil spirit, cried out, What do you want with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are. The Holy One of God. Do you know why the man came? Because for many, many, many years, Satan was, in, was involved and messed up everything, caused chaos. And Satan knew that the Messiah was here, and that was the end. He knew he couldn't overcome Jesus. He was the creator of you and me. And we don't have to depend on anything else because we can depend on him. We must learn how. We must. Things, statues, pictures. Those things are dead, but Jesus is alive. And this man knew that Jesus would overcome for sure. He knew. Isn't that cool? 
Jews at that time knew that Satan would cause sickness or cause bad things to happen or cause disease or blindness, death, cause cripple, crippling. It caused many, many things. They believed that. And Satan today has some churches have, people have come up to me and said, so your family's deaf, so I think that maybe Satan was involved in your family. That's why you had deafness for so long. And they say if we get under an exorcist, you know, where they throw holy water on you, and my family's deafness would go away if we had an exorcist. Or if my children or someone's behavior is bad, it's because of Satan. You need an exorcist. I don't know. It's scary to think of that. But today, we do still face problems, and we do still face many things that pop up in our lives, in our marriages, in our relationships, in our schools, in our work, with our children, with our parents, with the aging parents. We have many things because life can be hard. And Satan is very active in the world, very active. But if you don't learn how to depend on him and how to surrender to him and let him control, be in control of your life, then you will drown in despair. You will drown in wondering what to do. We use good luck things because you can see that thing. You can't see God. You try to pray, and he doesn't answer your prayer right away, so you, you grab a thing and try something else. But I'm telling you, I promise you, you will not find an answer in a dead God. You will only find answers and help and encouragement and love and grace and feeding through Jesus Christ, our Messiah. That's the only way. The only way. Okay. Let's see what happens. So verse 25. 27 and 20, or 25 through 28. Jesus said, be quiet. Come out of him. The evil spirit shook the man violently and came out of him with a shriek. And the people were all so amazed that they asked each other, what is this? A new teaching and with authority? He even gives orders to evil spirits and they obey him. And the news about him spread quickly over the whole region of Galilee. It spread all over. Wow, praise the Lord that Jesus came and he showed us that God is real and God is alive and that Jesus can command whatever you have inside, whatever battle you have inside of you right now today, yesterday or tomorrow, next week, forever and ever, whatever your spiritual worker is, God can command it to come out of your body. He can show you what to do. He can show you what not to do. He can make your day good. He can make your life good. He can help you pick colleges, pick a spouse, pick a place to work. He can help you make any decision that you need to make. Because he loves you, and he cares about you, and he stayed alive for you. He was buried and resurrected for you and me. Whatever you're battling inside, even if it's small, or if it's big, or if it's overwhelming, he wants you to depend on him, and not things. Him. He's right there waiting for you to come to him and pray to him and say, Lord, help me because my life is a mess. My life is hard. I don't know what to do. I need you there. 
You have to do your part, though. You can't ask, and if he doesn't give it to you what you want, or he doesn't do what you want to hear, you just drop that and then you go to things. You get your coin and rub Buddha's belly. No. You ask him to provide, and you receive it, and you surrender to his perfect plan, his perfect, what he wants for your life. And to believe, to believe that. It's a relationship back and forth, and it will be successful. Amen? Amen. Let's close on here.